All right. Now to apply the application of this exponential function stuff. We're going to talk about half-life, we're going to talk about simple interest, and we're going to talk about compound interest. Some things are going to be growing, some things are going to be decaying. So, one of the most common examples of exponential growth deals with bacteria. Bacteria can multiply at an alarming rate because each cell can split and create two cells, and these new cells can split and create four new cells, so on, just doubling and doubling and doubling. For example, if we start with only 20 bacteria now, um, and they can double every 40 minutes, by the end of one day we could have 1.3 trillion bacteria. So, a little insane. So let's assume that at time zero, we have 20 bacteria cells. Since it says they can double every 40 minutes, after 40 minutes, we're going to have twice as many as 20. So that would be 40. After another 40 minutes, it's going to double again, and so now we're going to have 80. After another 40 minutes, 120 minutes now after we started, we're going to have it double again, which will be 160 cells. It's going to double again, 320, double again, 640, and double again, 1280. So, that's just after 240 minutes, or if you divide that by 60, that's four hours. Um, and so you remember from last time that we talked about this basic equation. This A value was the y-intercept, or the starting value, and the B was the constant multiplier. So if we're doubling, that constant multiplier in our case is going to be 2. And so what we have is y equals our starting value, which was our 20 cells that we started with, times 2 being our constant multiplier, raised to the x. Now we have to define what x is, because x is the time factor here. And x is equal to the number of doubling times, the doubling periods. So it's either you divide by the, take the 40 minutes into account before you start, or you take the 40 minutes into account after. And so this is saying number of 40 minute periods. Or we could write the equation y equals 20 times 2 raised to the x divided by 40, where x is number of minutes. It doesn't matter to me as long as you define which one you're using. Either one works, and either one will get you to the exact same spot. Here's why. So let's predict the number of cells after 60 minutes. Now, how many doubling times is that? 60 minutes is the 40 minutes plus another 20. 40 plus 20. So that's one and an extra half, or three halves doubling time. And so you'll get that even if you do this equation, because you'll do 60 divided by 40, and that's one and a half. And so 20 times 2 raised to the 1.5, or 3 halves power. So you grab your trusty calculator, because it'll just be easier. 20 times 2 to the 1.5 power. 56.6 um, is the cells. So we could predict the number of cells as being, we'll have 56, and it'll be in the process of making the next. So how many after four hours? Well, both of our equations deal with minutes, and so we're going to have to first deal with four hours being four times 60 minutes per hour. And so we're going to have 240 minutes. So how many doubling times is that? y equals 20 times 2 
240 divided by 40 is 6 doubling times. So we're going to raise it to the 6th power. 20 times 2 raised to the 6th power. Remember that we're doing exponents first, so it's really 2 to the 6th times 20. So we get 1,280 cells. And that's what we got before. That was the 240 minutes um, that we had done prior. Um, and say we started with 20, how many were there 30 minutes ago? And so you could go a go, meaning negative time-wise. And so what we're talking about here is saying y equals 20 times 2, 30 minutes out of 40, so we have 3 fourths of a doubling time back in time. And so that's going to be 20 times 2 raised to the negative, I'm going to go to the 0.75 power. like that, and we get 11.9. Or, let's say we had 11 cells. Not quite 12, but 11 cells. And when will we have more than 5,000? So, when will we have more than 5,000? We're going to look at the 5,000 as being what we want and set that equal to 20 times 2 to some power. Um, and that x again representing the number of doubling, doubling periods. And so I'm just going to see when that happens. We're going to look at either you can do it one of two ways, 20 times 2 and just start playing around until we get 5,000. So 400, 20 times 2 to the 10. So we're at 20,000, so we've gone too far. 20 times 2 to the 8th. There's 5,000, 20 times 2 to the 7th. So it's someplace in between 7 and 8 doubling periods. Um, and so we're approximating. So you can say 7, how about 7.5? Or I'm hitting second enter to get back to there. 7.6, 7.7, 7, And so it happens someplace in between 7.9 and 8. And so we could say 7.95. And so we're getting a lot closer here. We're approximating. And now we just went over, so 9, 7. So you can, you can see that we're getting x is approximately 7.97, but that, um, that's going to be doubling times. And so what that needs to be is let's multiply that by 40 minutes. So 7.97 times 40 minutes, divide that by 60, and you'll get the amount of hours. So after 5.3 hours, about, and that's an approximate way of doing it, we get what we're looking at. All right, we'll continue in the next video.